Oh guys, welcome back. Interesting one today. Now, if you've been shooting air guns for any amount of time, you're almost certainly going to have come across these fancy little bottles with potions and lotions inside, all of them extolling their virtues of increasing your power and accuracy and the likes. Now, today we're going to go and test some. A lot of these, they look like they've got STP in, two-stroke oil, various things. They're almost always this pinky ready sort of colour. Now, I've used these over the years with practically every conceivable barrel, every conceivable type of ammo. And for me, the results are generally somewhat underwhelming. However, a few years ago, I started using a wax-based lube, which is this stuff in here. I'll show you at the end of the video what it is. Now, the wax-based lube works very well. You can use it either damp or you can pop it into a foam in the bottom of a tin and you can actually use it dry as well. If you let it dry for a few days, it will stay on the pellets and it seems to work relatively well. Now, we've got three types of pellets to try. We've got the basic Gamo 10Xs. These were £6 a tin. A premium pellet, we've got the JSB Exact Heavies. We've used these on the channel. Well, in fact, we've used all three of these on the channel. This is a reasonably good batch. We've seen these already. They run pretty well. And we've also got here the Field Target Trophy Greens. Now, these are a lead-free pellet. And so far, of the lead-free ones we've used on the channel, these have been pretty good. So what we're going to do, we're going to run them through the Chrono as well. So it'll be interesting to see how well the 9015 is still performing. A lot of people have questioned some of the groups that I've shot at range and said, oh, the Anschutz isn't great. So we're going to run these over the Chrono. We'll do them dry first. So straight from the tin, we're going to do some groups at 25 yards, unlubed and then lubed, and we'll chrono each of them as we're going. So we'll be able to see whether or not we pick up any speed and whether or not the groups get any better or any worse once they're lubed. Now, for the most part, I don't bother lubing stuff, but a few weeks back when we were shooting these lead-free Zans, we wouldn't have been able to make that video had we not lubed these pellets. This wax-based lube that I was using was enough to actually allow these to completely come through the barrel. They still were down on speed, but unlubed, they were getting stuck in the choke. So... It's going to be an interesting test. We're going to run it all over the chrono as well. We'll get the groups shot and then hopefully we can make a conclusion. So I'm going to call it now, generally from my experience, for basic pellets and harder pellets, you're likely to see more of an improvement than if you're using a good quality pellet. So a good quality lead pellet is likely to see less of an improvement. You should still see a small increase in speed. Not a clue how the green pellets are going to go at all. I'm hoping that going forward we can learn something from this and it certainly might translate to getting the slugs up a little bit faster through our sub-12 rifles. But generally speaking, if you've got a harder pellet and a more budget pellet, we're likely to see some more improvements with this than we would do over a premium pellet. So I'll get everything set up and I'll see you at the farm. Right, we're here. So we're at 25 yards just under. We're going to start with the FTT greens because they shouldn't put any deposits in the barrel. Then we're going to do the JSBs because them gamos will run quite nicely after the JSBs have been through. We're just under 25 yards. Hopefully you can see the targets down there in the work, mate. Bring that back down here. I'm going to shoot it prone. I've got the old barrel shroud off of the barrel at the moment. This is the factory Anschutz barrel. This is the least fussy barrel that I own, so it should be good for testing. We're going to stick to the closer range. We're fairly well sheltered in here as well. There's a little bit of a breeze running, but hopefully this should keep it as fair a test as possible. So I'm just going to get a couple of zeroing shots off first just to make sure that we're on the card, and then I'll get the GoPro on and we'll get these groups shot. Right, hopefully the GoPro's on. It's been messing around a little bit of late. I think I need to um, get a replacement, something a bit better. It's lost us a bit of footage over the last couple of months, which I'm not too pleased about really. So I'm on 15 mag. We've just backed it back to its minimum focus distance on the scope of 25. And we're going to go for the top right hand little crosshair on there. So don't worry about where the groups actually land relative to the crosshair. What we're going to do once we've shot these, we'll get these shot. I'll stop talking and then we'll get it chronoed afterwards. Okay, not too bad. The first two of those went literally through the same hole, then we got a slight scattering after that. So I'm going to show you what the card looks like now, and then we're going to get it chronoed up, and we'll take that reading as well. Right, there we go. Then there's our card. So this was just a zero check, just chucking them into the middle. We've probably got, I don't know, just under an inch, something like that spread on those. So not too bad for a lead-free one. What we're going to do now, we're going to swap over to the JSB heavies next on the bottom left here. Right, second shot then over the Combro, 906 feet per second exactly, same as the first couple of shots. So the 9015 is incredibly consistent. So 905, 906 at 5.71 grains is about 10 and a half foot pound just under. So that gives us a benchmark to work with. I'm going to swap over now to the JSBs and we'll do the same again. 
right JSB heavies instead of just running through so we've just got 716 feet per second for 10.34 grains that's about 11.7 this is what this normally runs at at maximum so it barely creeps above that even when you use something like a QYS Magnum so pretty much as it ought to be I've just done a couple of shots again both of those gave exactly 716 feet per second so not bad at all we're going to get these onto paper now and we'll see how they group right onto the JSB heavies then so we've just chronoed a couple of those up of course we've just shot them lead free ones so they may well take a couple to come on hopefully it won't take too long that's why i've used this barrel because it's not particularly fussy or anything like that so i'm just going to put a couple into the middle of the card and then i'm going to go down onto the old bottom left and see how it goes right i'm quite happy with how them ones have just got into the middle of the card so i'm just going to bring across now bottom left hand card and then do our sample group Okay, perfect. Some JSB heavies. We've got a little clover leaf group there. Let's get the GoPro stopped. Right, that stopped. I'll run you down there quick. Right, here we go then. So the two of those basically got two pellets stacked next to each other. You can see there's a few little fragments actually from these pellets that are breaking up. Most of it's been caught in the lead lining, but then you've got a few little bits that are coming out, but there's no real energy left in them, so they can't even pierce the card from behind, which is interesting. So JSB heavies group really well. We've used these ones before on the channel. They perform pretty well, and actually if we'd run a few more through, I'd expect to be able to tighten that group up, but that's certainly good enough for testing. Right, next I'm going to go on to these little gamos. So I'm going to get them chronoed up first, then we'll shoot the groups. Right, so we're on the old Gamo 10Xs. I've just done two shots already for 797 feet per second, which, given the lack of weight of these, is about 10.5, 10 10.4, something like that. We'll double check when we get home anyway. But that was amazingly consistent. I mean, the action itself is consistent, but, of course, there's a bit of weight and size variation. Now, this is pointing in a safe direction down the end. 795. So of the three shots, we've got 795 once and 797 twice. So through the Anschutz, through that particular barrel, them Gamo 10Xs actually show a reasonable bit of consistency from the three that we've just shot. Let's do another one. Let's see what happens on a fourth shot, shall we? I'll try and do it all in real time. This is quite awkward whilst holding the phone. It's even more awkward holding, holding with my wrong hand. Right, ready? 795, so we've got two at 797 and two at 795. So, got to be honest, we never chronoed them the last time we used them, but that's not bad at all considering. So, right, we'll get these actually onto the groups now. We'll get them shot. Right, so game mode 10 xs now then. That was quite surprising, the consistency over the chrono. I mean, the 9015 has always impressed me. It's always pretty good over the chrono, regardless of what ammo you put in it. Certainly a lot better than some others, but when we last used these, there was clearly a bit of variation in size or weight. So the fact that we've got two at 797 and 795s, not too bad. Right, we're going to go now then for the bottom right hand. Whereas three of those have actually gone through the same hole, so really not too bad. I'll run you down there quick, we'll get the GoPro stopped. And then we'll go on to the lubed ones. Well, there we go, Gamo 10Xs, so pretty good over the chrono. There's actually three through that tiny little clove leaf group. So three of those have given us the same group size as the JSB heavies and a couple of extra ones. One high and one low, so difference in size and weight, that'd explain that. What we're going to do, I'm going to swap the cards over now and we're going to go on to the lubed ones. Right, I've just rolled, oh, dropped one. In my little um, screw top pellet tin, I've just got a squirt of that lube in there. I'm just rolling them around. I don't absolutely saturate them and I actually shoot these ones with it still fairly damp, so that's gonna go straight in the barrel. That one actually felt particularly tight. We pointed in a safe direction. 804, so we're still well under, so we've gone through, what was it, 795, 804, so we've got an extra nine feet per second. Let's do another one. Don't forget, these are super light. These are 7.56 grains, so that's probably still under 11 feet per second. Sorry, that's still under 11 foot pounds, so. We will double check all these when we get back though. Right. Same again. 802. So we have seen slight increase in speed. Right, third one. 802, hopefully that's all come out on there. 
that's pretty good. It gives you an idea that the action itself that we've been using for the last year on film is incredibly consistent, even putting through ammo that's not that consistent in size. We're still getting some pretty good readings, so that's pretty cool. Right, let's get a little group shot on the card then. The card is exactly the same as we had before, all in the same positions. Got five of them in my little tin down here at the moment, and we'll get them on paper now. Okay, GoPro's on. So we've got the 10Xs. I've got five lubed ones here. With this wax-based lube, you can actually let it dry out if you wanted to. I prefer usually just to use it damp as if you would do um, like the power pellet oil or something like that, the damp oils, but you can actually let this dry for no ill effect. It doesn't even seem to get too manky in the barrel either. So, right, let's get these shot, shall we? Okay, that's not too bad a group, whether or not it's any better than the other one. Do not know, let's go and have a little look at it. Right, there we go, so this one's we've just shot, it's five in there, so we've definitely got a slight increase in speed. I think that that group's probably much the same. It looks like it's in a slightly different position to the last group that we shot, but we'll have a better look when we get back. Right, I think the next ones we're gonna do then, we're gonna do the JSB heavies, and then we'll do the FTT greens last. They're the ones that I'm really interested in. I'm hoping that we can see a bit more speed with those. So, right, onto the JSB heavies. Well, I've just done the first shot with the heavies. We've got 716 is that, so that's basically the same as before. Reset that. Okay, so we're still legal. That's about 11.8. This is pretty much the power this will actually ever make. This is a converted six foot pound rifle, so they don't really ever go over. It hasn't really got the reg capacity or anything like that to go much higher than this. Shoots nicely at this sort of speed. So 718, 716, 717. Right, let's try one more then and see how that runs. So as I said at the start, I didn't think that we'd see much of a improvement with a decent lead pellet, sort of a premium one, but 714, not bad. Okay, right, let's get these onto paper then. Right, GoPro's on, we've got the five JSB heavies here that are lubed, just giving each one a little roll around in the foam in the tin. Bit sticky on the old fingers, but Nothing too much to worry about. Right, bottom left card. Hmm. Right, JSB heavies in five of those. That looks pretty much the same size group. In fact, maybe even a little bit larger than the unlooped ones. Let's go and have a little nose. What have we got there then? Just over a centimetre, these are centimetre squares on here, so I think that's actually marginally larger than the unlubed version. So next up then, FTT greens, these are the ones that I'm expecting to see a biggest improvement in. I'm hoping it will do, because it might mean that going forward, if we have got a switch over to lead free, then we are a little bit better prepared, got a better idea on how to get the best of them. So gonna get them over the chrono quick, as per the last ones, then we'll get some shot. Right, FTT greens, just giving them a little swill around. If you remember when we were shooting them um, Zan lead free slugs, without this lube, we wouldn't have been able to carry on. We physically couldn't get them down the barrel until the lube was on. So it's gonna quickly bring this over to a safe position on the back stop. That do. Right, ready? 900 feet per second. Is that less than they made before? I haven't written it down. I'll have to um, consult the footage when we get home. 900? Yeah, I think they were a little bit above that. Can't remember, we'll check. Either way, given the lack of weight of these, that's still well down. I don't even think that's over 11 foot pounds, so. 895. Right, last one. 894 okay so we're pretty consistent across the weight and the different sizes the action itself the answer is pretty consistent so i can't remember what they shot when they were unlubed we'll check it when we get back let's get these five into a group and see how they go right gopros on we're on to the ftt greens now they certainly felt smoother loading lubed than they did when they were dry so hopefully that will um, translate into some slightly better groups down range so we're on the top right card at the moment see how they run Right, five FTT greens. They certainly feel better to shoot. There's slightly less sort of abruptness on firing, so they're certainly getting down that barrel a bit smoother. It's quite noticeable. The sight picture, although it's not abrupt on this at all, it's a stabilized action. It's even smoother now 
all of the super hard and the lead free pellets do feel a little bit dodgy whereas them lubed ones these ones we've just shot certainly feel a little bit better i could watch them all the way into the target so let's go over the card see how it looks right lubed ones is that any better any worse what's that 15 16 mil across we'll have a little look when we get home it's quite interesting they certainly felt a little bit smoother to shoot so yeah overall not too bad bit to talk about so i'll see you at home Okay, we're back. Well, it was quite a fun chrono in them up as well. It certainly shows that the Anschutz is in good health, incredibly consistent still. Our actual regulator in that particular rifle hasn't been out of there for nearly four years. When I first got it, it was serviced annually, but certainly the last few years, I haven't really done an awful lot with it. So it's nice to see that it's still incredibly consistent. It does also mean that some of them groups that we've shot previously, when some of them pellets were dropping, it was probably me just being a numpty. I've cut the cards up a little bit, as you can see here, just to make it easier. So the JSB exacts. The lubed ones here on the left and then the unlubed on the right. Now the group was actually marginally worse with the lubed ones over the unlubed ones, which is surprising. I was expecting them to be much the same, but as I suggested at the very beginning of the video, if you're using a softer premium pellet like the JSBs or any of the derivatives they make, the Air Arms or the FX and Day States, whatever, you're likely to see less of an improvement with those. So 10.34 grains they weigh, it's 717 feet per second, that's 11.8 foot-pounds. Now, the 9015 is a converted 6 foot-pound rifle, so it's designed for 10 metre indoor shooting. These are not a throttled down high power rifle. It's hard to make these get anywhere near or certainly go over, even when you're running uh, QIS Magnum, they'll be still just under 12 foot pounds, so nice and legal but incredibly consistent. These actually are not a bad pellet, we've used these before, we've got some fairly good groups on the day overall, as I thought really. Now this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting, we'll go over to the Gamo 10Xs, the budget ones. Right, so we've got the Gamo 10Xs here. You can see on the left, these are the unlubed ones, and then on the right are the lubed ones. Now, if we look at the group sizes, this was actually marginally tighter, again, unlubed. We had three that went through this little hole here, one high and one low, much the same as when we were using these through the Catran last week. The lubed group, slightly different shape of group, again, only marginally larger, but we did actually see another seven feet per second difference. Now, not a lot. It takes it from 10.7 foot-pounds to 10.8, very marginal gains. The reality is, is that some barrels, however, as with most things air rifle, what happens in my barrel is not necessarily likely to happen in yours. If you're using some of the hammer forged barrels, the CZ and the BSAs, for instance, over the years I've used Acupels, which are a very hard pellet. They're the Crossman Premiers of old. They really did perform better when they were lubed, whereas the majority of things like JSBs and the likes didn't. So again, yes, we've picked up a little bit of speed, tiny little bit of power because of that, but actually the groups themselves are really not much better. Now, what I'm really interested in is the FTT greens. Right, so here's the h and FTT greens. Now, I was hoping that with these lubed ones, especially after them lead-free Zan slugs, these wouldn't go through the barrel unlubed. They had to be lubed to actually shoot. I was hoping that we'd pick up a bit more speed with the h and FTT greens, but interestingly, they made less speed when they were lubed than they did when they were straight from the tin. So we had 906 feet per second, for 10.4 foot pounds because of that lack of weight at 5.71 grains they only made 895 feet per second so they dropped 0.2 of a foot pounds to 10.2 and again you can see that the group sizes are pretty much identical we we're outdoors they, we were fairly sheltered but we still had a tiny little bit of breeze so overall i was hoping that we might have seen these speed up a little bit more i'm definitely going to have to come back with my lube and try this down the line with some of the lead slugs because we really want to be getting the speeds up of those a little bit so from the testing today the wax based lube hasn't really shown any major improvements. We've got a slight improvement on speed on the budget pellets, but certainly with the lead free and the premium JSBs, not really that much better. Now I've used the STP types, these red ones, the power pellet lubes and things, and the results that I've always got have been much the same. Now this stuff, this is actually a bicycle chain lube. This is actually a wax lube. It's actually muck off dry oil, so this is readily available. In fact, I think I got this from Audi supermarket some years ago. Um, it works very well. It You can use it dry or damp as we did today. Now, if you're a bench rest shooter and you've washed your pellets and everything else, you really ought to then consider a lube of something after you've gone through the full prep just to stop them oxidising. If you get a chance, guys, definitely give this a go. If you're looking to potentially find an extra half mil millimetre in your group as a bench rest shooter, for me outdoors, the wind and everything else is going to be a far bigger contributing factor to group size than anything I can add onto my pellets. So overall, quite fun. It's nice to see the Anschutz is working quite well. Is it snake oil? Well, for some of you, you may well find a little improvement. 
if it were me, I would certainly go and have a little look for the old muck off dry oil. It's been running through my barrels over the years for no ill effect. So if yours goes rusty or anything like that, don't hold me to it. I'm not having any of that. But this is what I've been using. And it seems to, in the right barrel with the right ammo, you may well find a slight improvement in your group sizing. So that'll do it for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next one.